Good morning, friends, and welcome to your virtual art class. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and you're looking forward to being creative today. Uh, excuse me, but yes, Sammy Witch. Um, I'm noticing something different about you. Well, could it be my eyes? Um, those are my eyes. Well, Sammy Witch, you have your eyes on you, and I have my eyes on me. Well, those eyes, those eyes are a little confusing. Well, Sammy Witch, um, someone said they needed an extra pair of eyes, so this was my solution. Oh, in that case, that's okay. All right. Let's get started on your Square One Art Project. Before we get started, let's do our mantra. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's prepare ourselves to be creative. So repeat after me. I am an artist. I create with my hands. I create with my head. I create with my heart. I can create anything. All right, so here we go. So last time, as you may remember, we looked at uh, some examples where um, folks broke down their um, paper with some curvy or, or zigzaggy lines. And then what we did is we wrote three um, positive uh, words in those spaces. And we made sure that our words touched the top and the bottom of those lines. We also made sure that they stretched from one side to the other side. And if they didn't, it was okay. You could draw some other shapes um, to help fill that space. So before we get started on our next step, I want you to look to make sure that you're your letters are touching the top and the bottom. And I want you to make sure that your words are stretching across the page. And third, I want you to make sure that your words are spelled correctly. I also am making sure that I've covered all of my words with a dark crayon. Remember, we wanted to use a dark crayon so that they would really stand out. Now you might notice on mine, I started putting uh, the designs in um, some of these areas, again, with my crayon. So let's just get a closer look here. All right. So I just started putting a few patterns here and there. And just a real quick um, to show you how to do that. And here, friends, you don't have to use uh, dark colors. But you do need to remember to press hard. All right. So I'm just going to take out a few crayons here and um, just finish up in some areas. You don't have to fill every space in with a pattern. Just here and there is nice. Or you can you can put in every um, in every space you can put a pattern. So I'm just going to keep going here and add a few more patterns. Remember, a pattern is something, a design that repeats itself. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. I really like to use white crayon as well, and I'm going to use that um, in these areas. I'm making sure that I'm pressing really hard, so hard even that I broke my crayon. But um, remember, what we're going to be doing next is a watercolor. And what the wax crayon does is it acts as a resist. And a resist is something that pushes something else away. So when you mix oil and water together, for example, what you'll find is that the oil just kind of sits right on the water. All right? And um, it doesn't mix. The same thing kind of happens, the same thing happens with the wax crayons. And that is that um, the wax pushes away the watercolor 
and the lines that you make will show up. And it's particularly kind of cool with the white crayon because it's like you have made a secret message. And in fact, when I was a little girl, I used to write messages with my friends and then we would go over the top of them with some watercolor. All right, I'm just gonna make one more little design here and now we're gonna get started. So for the next part of your um, Square One Art project, what you're gonna need are your Crayola markers. You wanna make sure that these are your kind of your washable Crayola markers, all right? You don't wanna use a Sharpie marker because those are permanent, all right? So you have your, your Crayola washable markers. You have a container that's filled with water and mine, um, I didn't change it from yesterday. I just left it because it's not super dirty. If you don't have a paintbrush, do not despair. You can also use cotton swabs as paintbrushes. All right. So, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to start adding a little bit of color here and there. I don't have to color the whole thing in. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute. And every time I kind of hit a new shape, what I'm going to do is I am going to use a different color. So before I get too far along, I'm going to show you here with this one. And then we'll, we'll keep moving. So I've just dipped my cotton swab into the water and it's got a good amount of water on it. The other thing you might want to have handy is a paper towel to use as a, a, a dabber when you are um, working in case you get too much water on your, on your picture. So here we go. I am going to take my cotton swab and I'm going to start painting with it and you can see what is happening. Remember here, I put some of the white crayon and you can start to see the designs I created like that. So you can see the white polka dots that I made. Now, my cotton swab is dirty or it has this red color on it, I could choose to go over this yellow and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I would make a different color. But right now I'm just going to dip this in and I'm going to paint with it. Just the clean side. And so I kind of like just to put my cotton swabs off to the side so that if I want to, I can look what I've done. I've taken my red and I've added a little bit to it. And now I've made a nice orange in here. And so I've kind of blended just like I would be able to do with the paintbrush. So cool. So now I'm going to go to the next area. I'm going to put down some blue. And I just want you to look, I'm not putting down a huge amount of color. I can put down more if I wanted, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing the watercolor. What will happen is the area here will be nice and dark. And as I go to the middle, it might lighten up a little bit. Whenever you use more color and less water, the color is going to be darker. And whenever you do vice versa, more water and less color, then the color is going to be lighter. Cool. So I'm just going to keep going here. I'm going to take some of this orange, which I love this orange, and I'm going to use my already used cotton swab here, and I'm just going to go over the top, and I love how that looks. You're almost creating like a batik effect, which is a process that you use on fabric that involves wax and um, fabric dye, and it's very, very similar to this although this is a little bit more of a low-tech solution. So 
I realized I don't have any designs here. And at first I was okay with that, but I'm realizing I really love seeing this little bit of texture underneath. So I'm just gonna go back and add some designs as I'm going. I wanna take this grain. And what I'm trying to do here, friends, is I am trying not to leave any white space. Remember one of the things with Square One Art is that you want to try to make it as colorful as possible. All right. Now, I love this green and this pink together, but I just want to show you, um, if I wanted to mix colors, I'm going to let this dry for a minute, and then I'll come back and show you. But um, let's say I didn't have a purple marker. So I'm going to take some of this red color, which is actually raspberry. And I'm going to take some of this blue color and add it. And then I'm going to take my cotton swab here and I'm just going to mix these. And you can see what happens. Just like if you were using regular watercolors, you can mix colors easily with your Crayola markers. Isn't that just so cool? Now, if you haven't picked up Crayola markers yet, don't worry, but we are going to be using them for one of our next uh, projects too. So please, if you have the opportunity um, to go out and get some, that would be wonderful. Um, I want to take some of this blue now, now that this has dried, and you just want to go over it when it's dry. Otherwise, you can kind of mess up your marker a little bit. I'm going to add a little blue and I'm going to put a little green on top. And I'm going to show you <clears throat> then I can make this kind of nice turquoise color with those two Crayola colors. Oh, the light isn't that great, is it? Anyway, trust me, it is. There we go. Maybe you can see it a little better now. It is definitely kind of more of a turquoise blue. Maybe I'll show you in this bigger space here that doesn't have anything in it. So when I take this green, and I take up this blue, and now I'm going to take up the water, and you can kind of see how it becomes this turquoise or blue green color. All right. So what I want to do is I want to do the border. I want to do the whole thing. And it's going to be completely painted and markered. All right. Now you might say, well, why do I have to use it as a watercolor? Well, because we're trying to create this resist here. And that is a whole other element that is going to be included in our, um, in our picture. And it's just gonna look super beautiful. So um, I wanted you to have the opportunity to do some watercolor. And this is the best opportunity we have right now considering we're not in the art room. And you can see here again, I made those white lines and it's like I've written a secret message in my artwork, just like that. Okay, friends, so you're gonna finish this up. It's gonna be one beautiful color and this is our Square One Art Project. I'll talk to you more about how to submit it to me um, so that we can mail it in, but um, just take your time and do a good job uh, finishing this up and adding and adding your color. And most of all, have fun. Take your time, make it beautiful. All right, friends, we are gonna end our class with a mindfulness activity. So wherever you are right now, if you wanna sit quietly and just close your eyes, your hands can sit on your lap or folded on the table, depending on where you're sitting and just kind of relax for a moment. And I want you to imagine you're a cloud floating in the sky. 
And I want you to think about what kind of clouds you might be. Are you one of those big puffy white clouds? Are you one of those swirly whirly clouds? Are you a cloud that is a storm cloud? And if you're a storm cloud right now, if you can imagine your angry raindrops just falling away. Are you one of those clouds that is a silly shape like a jelly bean or a polar bear? Are you a sparkly cloud that's full of snowflakes? Just think about what kind of clouds you might be. Think about how you can be any kind of cloud you want. It could change with the wind. Now, clouds, I want you to take a deep breath in and let it out. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care of yourselves and be well. I cannot wait to see your Square One R projects. Take care. Bye-bye.